In the previous video, you saw what the comorbidities of ADHD are and that they are rather the norm than the exception in children, adolescents or adults. We will now focus on differential diagnosis. But what is the difference between a comorbidity and a differential diagnosis? If the comorbidity is a disorder that comes with another diagnosis, such as suffering from depression while having ADHD, depression here would be a comorbidity of ADHD, the differential diagnosis is a disorder or a condition that may be ADHD-like and therefore must be ruled out before an ADHD diagnosis is made. There are somatic and psychiatric differential diagnoses. So let's first see the somatic differential diagnosis. One need to be sure that inattention or hyperactivity are not better explained by another illness, such as having trouble concentrating because you can't hear or see well. It's silly, but you have to think about it. Other diseases, such as diabetes, in which hypoglycemia can mimic attention difficulties or a lack of motivation, should be ruled out. We will have the same thing in anemia or hypothyroidism. In diabetes, hyperglycemia may also be associated with irritability, which may look like the emotion regulation problems of ADHD. One of the classics are sleep problems. If you do not sleep enough, you will be tired during the day, have attention difficulties, lack of motivation, and other phenomena very similar to ADHD. It will also not be uncommon to compensate the tiredness by becoming hyperactive. Finally, we will also ensure that the symptoms are not due to taking medication, such as corticosteroids, for instance. In short, there are plenty of disorders, epilepsy, consequences of heart trauma, stroke, high blood pressure, that can be pitfalls for the differential diagnosis of ADHD and in a case of doubt, it is always useful to see a specialist in order to exclude one or the other of these affections. Finally, in the elderly, you should think about cognitive decline or the onset of dementia as possible differential diagnosis. So now, what about psychiatric differential diagnosis in children? So there are plenty of differential diagnoses in children. The rebellious, disobedient, Defiant side and irritability found in ADHD will also be present in oppositional defiant disorder. Children with this disorder often argue with adults and become angry easily. If such symptoms are at the forefront, it may be an oppositional defiant disorder, but also a depression or an anxiety disorder, which in children can also cause such symptoms. Conduct disorders, lies, manipulation, breaking social rules and norms, lack of empathy, is another disorder that should be excluded. In children, we will still think of the disruptive mood dysregulation disorder, which will be characterized by frequent verbal and physical aggression and a very irritative or irritable mood. In children, but this will also be true for adolescents and adults, we will be careful not to miss an autism spectrum disorder. The social difficulties encountered by autistic children, the lack of interest in certain activities can sometimes mimic attentional symptoms. Finally, we will try not to attribute difficulties that are specific to dyslexia, dysorthographia or dyscalculia to attention difficulties or a lack of motivation. It will therefore be a question of looking for specific deficits in mathematics, reading or spelling and making sure that this is not what is causing difficulties for the child rather than ADHD. So well now that we've seen the differential diagnosis in children, let's see what it is in adults. In adults, psychiatric differential diagnosis will also be important to exclude. Antisocial and borderline personality disorders due to their impulsiveness and problems regulating emotions, including anger, can sometimes be confused with ADHD. Moreover, the relational difficulties are very similar to those found in ADHD. Anxiety disorders are not so easy to distinguish from ADHD. Anxiety can generate attentional difficulties, sometimes very similar to ADHD. The physical symptoms of anxiety and behavioral manifestations, such as nail biting, moving hands and feet, can easily suggest hyperactivity of the ADHD. Thoughts about anxiety can generate early night insomnia, like in ADHD. Depression, as in children, would also be a differential diagnosis and sometimes it can manifest itself by irritability, difficulty relaxing, lack of motivation, which may suggest again ADHD. 
In mood disorders, much has been written about bipolar disorder. In bipolar disorder, the depressive phases, lack of motivation, difficulty to concentrate, but also the so-called high manic phases can suggest ADHD. Indeed, in the high phase of the disorder, sleep disorders, motor hyperactivity, with a tendency to talk a lot, to lose social inhibitions, and risk-taking are observed, which may suggest ADHD. However, in bipolar disorder, there are well-marked episodes with periods of calm or return to normal, which are called otemia, which is not the case in ADHD. Another differential diagnosis is the consumption of substances, such as cannabis or alcohol. Taken in large quantities, cannabis can really cause symptoms that will be very difficult to distinguish from ADHD. There are other disorders that can mimic ADHD and that will have to be ruled out. We will not forget, for instance, the obsessive compulsive disorder or the negative symptoms of schizophrenia or even a PTSD. You've just seen the notion of differential diagnosis and you will have understood, I hope, that there are both somatic and psychiatric differential diagnoses. These must be systematically sought in children, adolescents and adults. It is important to systematically ask the question of the differential diagnosis because the treatment differs from that of ADHD. The search for a differential diagnosis is done by a specialist based on the symptoms reported by the patient during the first appointments. Depending on the type of symptoms, their manifestation over time, their daily expression, and the joint presence of other symptoms, the specialist can define whether it is ADHD or another disorder that looks like ADHD. Thank you.